how long does it take to get every single Pokemon in the generation they were released in? This is the question I want to answer as I complete my living decks. And today, we are going to play through the DS generations, as well as show you what it's like to transfer up Pokemon through these gens. First, let's set the ground rules. I need to capture every Pokemon. I need to capture every boxable form, so Gastrodon and Deerling count, whereas Arceus and Meloetta do not. Use legitimate or as legitimate methods as possible, with glitches counting, as so do emulated events. Now let's get started. This is cool. How much is it? I'll cut you a deal. Talk to three random clowns in the city. If they give you the three least likely clowns in the city, McDonald's Monopoly pieces, it's all yours. Now, with the start of each generation, I like to get the most troublesome Pokemon out of the way first. And while Gen 4 certainly has one, because unlike Gens 2 and 3, where I need to play an extra mainline game or two, I have to play a side series, Pokemon Ranger, to get the Manaphy Egg. Even though there are technically easier ways to obtain it through events, I wanted the original distribution. So, we beat the game and the bonus Manaphy mission through RangerNet. Then we transfer over to Pokemon Diamond. We need to play through Diamond and Pearl in order to get a few version exclusives. One, the Fossil in the Underground. It'll be easier to get them that way rather than Platinum, which is based off your ID. The Duskstone Pokemon, so Mischievous and Murkrow that we can get in Turn of Forest. And a duo that I'll dub as the Galactic exclusives. Glammeow and Stunky. Stunky in Diamond is that cycling road. However, Glammeow can be found as soon as getting Surf and going to the grass next to Candleleaf City, which is towards the end of the game. However, to do this quicker, we're going to use the Void Glitch to get to Candleleaf early by getting to New Moon Island, catching Darkrai, and battle our rival to get to the right half of Candleleaf, where we can actually get Quick Balls and catch Glammeow early. Now usually when I do stuff like this, I want to explain how this works, but honestly, I have no idea. There are amazing videos out there that explain it a hundred times better than I could. Just know it's technically possible, however Darkrai has a crazy low catch rate and you'll be stuck in Cantilave City. Now onto the main game, Platinum. We go through it as normal, catching every Pokemon we can, and on our way to Snowpoint City, we evolve all our location-based evolutions. Nosepass and Magneton in Mount Coronet, as well as Eevee in both Eternal Forest and Route 217. After we get Rock Climb and beat Candace, we also get our Duskstone evolutions, as well as Roserade, and even some move evolutions like Mamoswine, Yamega, and Ambipom. We also grab a Dawnstone that we will use for Frostlass. After being the game, we catch every single legendary Pokemon. Uxie, Mesprit, Azelf, Dialga, Palkia, Heatran, Regigigas, Giratina, Cresselia, as well as the Mythicals, Darkrai, Shaman, and Arceus. We also get Fiona, but instead of getting it through breeding, I wanted to get the My Pokemon Ranch one. With all the Pokemon I had in it already, I was really close to getting the Fione anyway, so I moved some Pokemon over to the game, then traded a spare Leafeon to Haley to get it. This isn't the best way to get Fione, bringing Manaphy is infinitely quicker, so My Pokemon Ranch is not getting added to the total. After getting all of the remaining Sinnoh Pokemon, another major hurdle arises. Gender forms. As of Gen 4, 93 Pokemon, not including Nidoran, have new forms based off of the Pokemon's gender. This creates a nightmare for my rules. I want to catch every Pokemon in the games that they are introduced in. However, every form also needs to be caught in the game that form was introduced in. How will I know which gender form is the one introduced in Gen 4? I looked at the official artwork for these Pokemon and compared it to the Pokemon home sprites of their forms. Unsurprisingly, a lot of Pokemon with gender forms default to the male form, but a few don't. There are some obvious ones like Meditate, Milotic, and Beautifly. There are some that make a little more sense, like Apom and Ambipom, as well as Zatu, and then there are some that makes no sense at all, like the Gibble line and Relicanth being the female forms. This has been a thought in my mind since the beginning of this whole challenge. 
so I was prepared and picked my Pokemon carefully. Almost all of these gender forms can be found through the game as normal either in post-game areas or used in post-national decks features, such as swarms through Don or Lucas' sister, or the dongle method. There are different spawns when a copy of a Gen 3 game is inserted into the DS. The most popular example is in a specific room of the old chateau. If you have any Gen 3 game in the GBA slot, there's a rare opportunity you can encounter a Gengar. The only Pokemon that might cause an issue are the three starter Pokemon that have gender forms. Torchic and its evolutionary line, Venusaur, and Meganium. Torchic and Venusaur are easy if you've been following along. Just get the starter form from the specific game and send it through Pal Park. Chikorita, we just need to play a little bit of HeartGold SoulSilver. Speaking of which, since I know people are going to ask, we are going to get the spiky eared Pichu in Ilex Forest and comb out the spikes to get her through the next generation. Pokemon Pearl took 4 hours and 33 minutes. Pokemon Heart Gold took 4 hours and 46 minutes. Pokemon Ranger took 7 hours and 23 minutes. And Pokemon Platinum took 47 hours and 46 minutes. Meaning, Gen 4 took a whopping 2 days, 16 hours, and 28 minutes, taking the crown for the longest generation so far. And to be honest, it was pretty easy besides all the gender forms. To start Gen 5, we're going to start in Gen 4 with one of the coolest events in the franchise. Back when Pokemon movies were made, they would often have next-gen Pokemon appear in the movies as major parts of the plot. Pokemon heroes with the Lati twins, Lucario and the Mystery of Mew, Manaphy in the Sea Temple, so on and so on. Gen 4's cross-generational movie features Zorua and Zoroark, as well as the legendary beasts and Celebi. You can obtain the shiny beasts, transfer them to black and white, and encounter Zoroark. Celebi was even cooler. Celebi unlocked a cool event in HeartGold and SoulSilver where you go back in time to see Giovanni. You also learn that your rival is Giovanni's son. Not only that, but you can transfer Celebi to black and white and you get Zorua in Castelia City. It's two cool events for the price of one. But there is another oddity to these events. Now I'm sure you're aware that events back in the day were distributed through special DS cartridges. And I was actually given one of these for the Shiny Beasts event. However, there's a secret on this cart. A distribution that was never officially released. Well, kind of. It's a Celebi distribution very similar to the Winter 2011 Celebi. But it has a GameStop trainer ID. It probably went unused because the Celebi event was programmed to happen a month after the last Legendary Beast was distributed. But no less, it's a really cool event Pokemon. There is nothing else super remarkable about Gen 5. I'm on day 2 of what my friends call hitting the wall. And ironically, in black today, um, I... One of the days that I have off, and I play Pokemon Black to do this dex challenge, and I get fucking Pokerus while I'm sick with Pokerus. Like, how rare is that? Like, that's ridiculous. There have been a lot of Pokemon that seem to be exclusive at one point, but are just rare in one game or the other. Like, Sock and Throw, the Basculin forms. Heck, Nacreen City, you can trade to get either a Petalil or a Cottony, depending on your game. Meaning, besides the Box Legend and the Genie Pokemon, there are only two lines that are 100% exclusive. Either the Gothita or Solosis Evolutionary lines, and the Rufflet Volibee lines. As well, of course, as getting the opposite Fossil and your starters. We also use the event distribution to get to Liberty Island for Victini, as well as get Meloetta, Keldeo, and Genesect. After we catch Cobalion, Verzian, and Terrakion, as well as Reshiram, Zekrom, and Kyurem, we have another set of legendaries to get. 
the forces of nature, Thunderous, Tornadus, and Landorus. Now, we've caught these Pokemon in the base game, but they have special forms. Forms you can only get in the Pokemon Dream Radar game. It's a pretty fun game with a ton of cool things to get, but the highlights are the new Therian forms, exclusive to this, as well as Black and White 2. White 2 took 27 minutes, Dream Radar took 2 hours and 59 minutes, White took 9 hours and 36 minutes, and Black took 30 hours and 34 minutes. That means Gen 5 took 1 day, 19 hours, and 36 minutes to complete. Now that I've caught all the Pokemon up to Gen 5, let's transfer them and organize them in Pokemon Bank. It appears that Pokemon Bank has been delayed for North America and Europe. Now this is not final, it's just that on the e These gens are fairly easy as far as transferring goes. You open Poker Transporter and move everything in that's in your first box. Now, this is a little time consuming and annoying on the actual game side because moving all these Pokemon means changing boxes, which in this gen requires saving. And you only transfer out 20 Pokemon. Now, something like PKSM would help organize these Pokemon a lot better because you can freely move them between boxes, but I wanted to do it legitimately. Gen 4 introduced Palpark, an area where transferred up Pokemon from Gen 3 are encountered in one of five areas field, forest, mountain, pond, and sea. You can only transfer six at a time, either using a DS Lite or an original DS. Meaning, every Hoenn Pokemon, as well as the three extra Deoxys and two unknown forms, took 24 transfers. And unfortunately, you can only do one transfer per day, meaning it took 24 days to transfer every Pokemon. Each session took about 10 minutes as I transferred Pokemon based on their location. So each of the six were found in one location instead of going around the whole park. While we are in Gen 4, we went to Veilstone City to change Deoxys's forms. Gen 4 to 5 is fairly similar to Gen 3 to 4, you play a minigame transferring 6 Pokemon at a time. Luckily this time, there's not a daily limit to the amount of Pokemon you can move over. Although, this time you need 2 devices to move Pokemon, not just one. This minigame can also lead to funny interactions such as Arceus and Crickdot jumping into each other and making both of them dizzy. Gen 5 to Bank is just like Gens 1 to 2, where Box 1 gets moved using Poke Transporter. Now, because of Gen 5's box system, this is a lot better than Gens 1 and 2. However, it's still time consuming as Gen 5 didn't have a multi select option as other generations do, at least to my knowledge. So, Gen 1 took me 50 minutes to transfer and another 30 minutes to organize the Pokemon in the Pokedex. Gen 2 also took me 50 minutes to transfer, mostly because saving between moving boxes takes so much longer in Gen 2 than Gen 1. And it took me 4 minutes to organize them. Gen 3 to 4 took me 4 hours to transfer between 24 days. Then Gen 3 and 4 to Gen 5 took 1 hour in 20 minutes. Gens 3, 4, and 5 to bank took a whopping 2 hours and 47 minutes. And that includes all of the organizing. So transferring and organizing all our Pokemon from Gens 1 through Gen 5, it took a grand total of 10 hours and 21 minutes. All together, to get every Pokemon in Gens 4 and 5, it took 4 days, 12 hours, and 4 minutes. Including all of the transferring and organizing of all the Pokemon brought it up to 4 days, 22 hours, and 25 minutes. Just shy of 5 days. That brings our total to 10 days, 13 hours, and 59 minutes to catch everything from gens 1 through 5 and have them organized in bank. These gens were some of the easiest to obtain Pokemon as Gen 4 introduced a lot of evolutions or pre-evolutions to previous Pokemon, to the point where 47% of returning Pokemon evolution lines, in the Platinum decks at least, had a Sinnoh Pokemon in their evolutionary line, with another 8% of those evolutionary lines having a gender form in their evolutions. Not to mention Black and White's whole shtick is to only have new Pokemon appear, However, they take forever to evolve. Next, onto a new system, new dimensions, 
and possibly our hardest challenge yet.